What's up, Carlton? How are you? I'm really well. How are you doing? Fantastic. It's a what gorgeous day in St. Helena. I'm, I'm in Napa. Yeah, Napa. Tell, me, tell me what's it like there right now. Fabulous as always. It's beautiful. It was uh, um, like it always is here. Nice and cool in the morning. Fog that burns off. Uh, I was up at one of our wineries up on um, Spring Mountain, Stony Hill. Uh, early this morning, you just watch the fog burn off. It gets nice and warm. It's gorgeous. No suffering. You have quite the life, don't you? Well, you know, on the surface. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, it's, it's a beautiful day. It's, uh, um, it's been a great growing season so far. Um, so we're blessed. Okay, now, me, well, I have a question. Tell me about the history of this. Like, this is, this is a really... Yeah. Cool. So this, uh, yeah, so my uh, this is actually my, my buddy makes this. Uh, uh, Diego Asario, uh, his family started it. And then uh, my good friend Maverick Carter um, worked with them to invest and to help uh, build more infrastructure and to build the brand as well in the U.S. So now Maverick, uh, LeBron James, Diego Asario, a number of other guys are, are behind this. And they're really doing it right. Uh, what makes uh, Lobos very unique is his age in pa Pedro Jimenez barrels. So Diego's family is in the wine business in Spain, in, in, in Sherry, in Jerez. And in Jerez, they grow a grape called Pedro Jimenez and they make a sweet Sherry. It's very, very rare, like delicious. And what they do is they ship the barrels over to Mexico and they finish the tequila in those Pedro Jimenez barrels. And it just gives this beautiful, luscious texture. I think and I should it, just sample it first before I put it in. Bang, bang back a shot. I mean, look, we were just in Miami at Formula One, I think I looked at it and I had to, I was so ashamed of myself when I looked at it. I called my buddy, I said, I think I drink a bottle of Lobos every day. Every <laughs> day. He said, really? I said, I said, I said, no, I said, think about it. I said, I think you did too. I said, we started very early every day and we went until the wee hours. I said, it's I think really we drink bottle every day. Almost no hangover. Because I usually drink like the Reposada or an yeah. Viejo, but I, this is like the Blanco. It's really yeah. smooth. I, I like it for mixing with this. It's very fresh. They, they do an extra Añejo that's insane. And that's the one I usually just sip with a little rock. It's incredible. I love this. I really like, I mean, I'll have this on the rocks just to squeeze the lime as well. It's a great, uh, a great aperitif, but it, for mixing, it's really fantastic. So we'll put, a, uh, we'll put a, we'll, right, we'll so put a, what do we do now? Yeah, so we, uh, we'll take the watermelon juice, put a couple ounces of Lobos in there. Into my glass? Mm-hmm. And you say a couple of ounces, like, is that a a shot, two shots? Two shots. What's today? Tuesday? Yeah, two shot Tuesday. Two, two shot Tuesday. Got it. Yeah, two we just made that up. That's okay. where we're going. Two shot Tuesday. Oh, wow. look at that. I speak your language. I like that. And, and, then, and then you do one, one ounce of, uh, of Gremonier, as we call it, uh, Grandma at DC. Is that right? You drink a lot of Gremonier, GM. It's huge in DC. Is that right? That's so funny because. They call it Grandma, yeah. It's, it's, it's like. Um, you know, it, it, it does remind me of a steakhouse after hours in a snifter, you know. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, it's um, DC's that kind of city. It's got that like old school energy, you know. I do like that. So this is just one one shot in here. I always do two to one um, Good. With, um, um, with tequila. Okay. It'll have some sweetness and that citrus um, and, and just the texture of, of Gremonier. Beautiful. Love it. Okay, done. Okay. Now what? You got, some lime, you got some lime juice there. I do. I squeeze some lime juice. Okay, you got a whole. Do you have a whole a whole shot of that? Yeah. Yeah. So one shot of this. A, a whole a whole one. If you have, I mean, let's see what you have. Two, one. Yeah. And I did more. Yeah, let's do a half. Another half. I like acid. It's what. That's perfect. What it does is it, it just keeps your your mouth salivating salivating. So you want to eat and drink more. Ooh, the and acid. Also, the is nice and round and clean so it works really well with lime naturally well that's so um, good so this is probably enough for two um so you got to back up for yourself oh good thank you thank you for thinking yeah. looking out for me okay yeah. now do i put this on the rocks or am i just putting so I, this I like it on the rocks so what i would do is it, it's not a cocktail you need you don't need to um you don't need to shake this the thing about shaking cocktails is it, it does, it's great to get them cold, but what it'll do is it'll water it down a lot too. In this one, you're going to add ginger beer, so you don't need to water it down very much. Okay, good. Very good. I like that. So I'm just going to do it on the rock. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I was, I'm so jealous. I'm still in the office. 
I know. Oh. What, I mean, this is you. You screwed up, basically. Oh my god, I'm about to. This is uh, I watermelon on the way home because I always have lobos at home, so I just need a little watermelon. I got everything else. All um, right, so you want to take that, just pour it over the rocks, and you leave about about an inch for your ginger beer. Yeah. And again, typically what you do is you would take this glass, put a little lime around it, and put it in the tahini, and then put it in because then you got that. And I only like a half a rim. I don't like when you rim the whole glass. Yeah. I'm gonna go in between the rim and not. Huh? I need options. I mean, I like. I really like where you're going with that. I, I mean, totally agree. So now, I feel like this is gonna be so delicious. Is the ginger beer gonna be like gilding the lily? Like, is it, it too much? Ginger and watermelon is great together. It's a fantastic combination. Like melon and ginger, it's really really nice. And then that spice. Okay. Now you got melon, ginger, the tahini spice. Okay, so now I'm just pouring how much of the ginger beer on there? Just fill it up and then give it a stir. You know, you add about, you know, let's say, all right, beautiful. It also adds effervescence, which I really oh, like. I like that. Okay, I'm trying it. Oh, yeah. And then, and then. Oh, yeah. This is a good summer drink right here. Time. Living's easy. This is good. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm just so jealous. I'm just coming out of COVID, and I feel like tequila is a great cure. It is. Sure. I'm gonna tell you, I uh, there's something about I, I swear we we drank a bottle a day of Lobos. No hangover. <laughs> Woke up, went to the gym every morning, got ready for the next for the next day. The Lobos That's were already ready for us. Got back to the room. It was Lobos time. <laughs> That's an interesting <laughs> phenomenon. Um, okay, so I have a couple of wine questions for you. Okay. Do you have a perfect palate? Like to be a wine sommelier, do you have to? Do you have a super sensitive palate? Um, you might. You know what? I, I my girlfriend is like, she's like, you taste and smell at a level of sensitivity that's like abnormal. You know, I was I was sitting in a restaurant the other night. I said, "Wow, well, you guys smell that?" I said, "There's some jasmine. Some, there's a jasmine bush very close to you. I love the smell of jasmine." You know, we walk in a restaurant, the whole front of the facade was jasmine. No one else smelled it. And I think it's something you train like anything else. You know, it's like as a, as a young uh, uh, chubby kid, I, I grew up in the kitchen with my grandmother. And I love nothing more than to eat. And I still love nothing more than to eat. And uh, that's where I learned to cook was my grandmother. So at a very young age, just like training, like cooking in, in the kitchen with my grandmother, you just train your senses. You're always tasting, smelling stuff nonstop all the time. And isn't a professional cook and you have to be able to do it quickly. You know, and then and then by the time you get to wine, it's the same thing. It's applied. I always tell people, you know, it's like, you know, I grew up in, in, in on the East Coast and you go up the turnpike and there's always these rest stops, the Cinnabon, right? And you go, you pull up and before you see the sign, you know, there's a Cinnabon shop because you can smell it. You smell the yeast, the sugar, mm -hmm. the cinnamon. And I feel like they pump that stuff out into the air, like in it's the mall. Amazing, you to know, for you in. But it's like, you know, you sort of slowly, you know, training your senses that way. So I don't think it's necessarily you're born with it. Maybe just, you just, um, you pay attention to it more and you just, you started at a young age. It's one of the, the few benefits of being a, a chubby kid. Just love to eat. You're always, you know, <laughs> always smelling and tasting stuff. That's awesome. Now, oh, yeah. what's your, what's your go-to wine? Like you go out to dinner, what's your, what's your go-to wine? Or does it change with every meal? You know what I, um, I, I believe very much in, in, in um, the marriage of food and wine and pairing, but I don't always think it's a necessity to have a great experience. I mean, sometimes I think it puts so much pressure on people. Sometimes you want to eat and you want to drink. And, and there's often times where I want to eat a certain thing, but I'm really in the mood for a certain type of wine and they don't necessarily match together. Yeah. You know, that's okay. You know, um, and I really, really, really like Chablis, um, which are, um, they're, they're Chardonnay based wines, but from Northern Burgundy and it's cold there. They got these beautiful limestone stone soil. So the, the wines are very mineral driven, mm. uh, but very fresh and get great acid. Yeah. I drink those all the time in restaurants. I also um, really love Syrah from, from France, from Northern Rhone. Yeah, uh, I love a Rhone. Meaty, meaty gamey, um, peppery. Is, peppery. It, is it like a Cote de yeah. Rhone peppery? Yeah, but, but I love the 100% straw. They're really nice. I also love, I love uh, Beaujolais. You know, Beaujolais used to be this sort of crappy wine that people were drinking mass. But, but, you know, as of, you know, 20 years ago, 
the tides turn and those producers start taking their farming, their winemaking very seriously. And the quality of wine you can get there for like 30 bucks is insane. 100% mm. DMA. You know, they're sort of like if you were to mix Pinot Noir and Syrah together. They've got the freshness of Pinot Noir, but that black spicy fruit like you get from Syrah. And you always serve them a little bit chilled. Chilled red wine in the summer. Amazing. Wait, wait, hold on. I want to write that down because I really like that. So I like the peppery, the black peppery. So you're saying a Beaujolais is that? That's what? That's yeah, Beaujolais what? is the region. Yeah. The grape is Gamay, G-A-M-A-Y. Okay. But Beaujolais is a very historical region. There was a time where Beaujolais was one of the most expensive wines in all of France for a very, very long time. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a really, really great region for wine, um, but they're, they're not over the, over the top expensive. And, and they age well too, you can sell them, but they're great, but always a little bit chilled. People drink red wine too hot. Um, you know, you put your red wines in the fridge, there's so much fresher. Even the bigger red wines, they're really nice. Well, that's such a good tip because when in, but around Christmas in December and January, I do kind of like a hot red wine. And I don't mean like truly hot, like hot mulled cider or something. I mean like, I like it to be kind of warm and, you know, yeah, really like a rich food. But in the summer, I do think that like a, a little bit of a chill of the red wine is fantastic. Yeah. And especially when you're, you know, you're eating outside and also your wine's only getting warm sitting on the table, right? Um, not that it sits around that long in my house. Once you open a bottle, it's like, it's got a short lifespan. And, and you know, so, you know, chilling it lightly, it gives a little bit of chance. You're not sitting out in the sun drinking hot red wine. Cause I don't just, I, I love white wine in the summer, but I, I want to drink red wine too. I like red wine. Yeah. So chilling it a little bit is, is, is a little nice in the summer. Huh? Ooh, that's a great tip. Um, okay. That's excellent. And so Carlton, what's, what's your favorite, like for on a budget, like under $30 bottle of wine? Oh, you must know. I'm, I'm very frugal, huh? I mean, I, I, I'm, this is, this is who I am. I go out and I spin and I buy really great wine and I just, it just sits. Cause I just, I just, oh, it's too expensive to drink. It's too expensive, to drink, you know? So I've got like the little section of cooler where it's like the stuff that I drink. And there's so much really delicious wine, you know, under 30 bucks. Um, I like Gruner Veltliner from Austria. I love that. Love a Gruner. I love them. And what you can get for 20, 25 bucks, you can get really, really beautiful wines. Um, you know, Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley in France, you know, a little light Sancerre. Really, yeah. really great. Um, you know, for, uh, for red wine, again, I think you can get some sort of village Beaujolais that are really fantastic. Um, let's see, you can get some stuff down from Provence, um, um, red wines from, from the South of France that are really nice from the Languedoc, um, that are fantastic. Again, the quality of just Cote de Rhone you can get, um, mm -hmm. Chianti's, there's a number of Chianti's that you can get that are under 30 bucks. 100% Sangiovese or just, you know, sometimes they blend a little other, you know, a few other grapes in there. But, you know, those wines, um, the, the, the quality of Chianti since the 80s is the same. And what you can get for, you know, for around 30 bucks, really, really fantastic wines. And they're great with, um, with not just meat, but, you know, heavier fish dishes as well, because they're not too tannic. Um, but all of it, Italy is actually a really great place for value red wines because they produce so much of it. Get away from some of the big regions. You know, go to uh, Apulia and you get Primitivos. Go down the I Campania. love Primitivo. I love it. My family and yeah. I went to Apulia uh, like three years ago, and every night they would serve us a Primitivo, and I just loved it. Like I came back wanting to just buy that. It's so it just they're right. They're fleshy. They're easy. Um, you know, you go down to Campania and they have Adianico, this beautiful sort of like a meaty, gamey varietal. Uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's so much, I think, mean, you know, for value, you got to get away from the big regions, you know, they're, they're popular for a reason and they're not going to be cheap. You know, so you got to go on the outskirts of some of those regions and some of these villages have been producing wines, you know, sometimes for over a thousand years, you know, in the same places. Yeah. You can get some great values. Those are great. Those are fantastic tips. So, okay. Well, last Carlton, I only have a couple more questions for you. Number one, how's the TV world treating you? You know, it was so much fun. I, um, it, you know, obviously it was very new. Um, and I, uh, I promised myself that I would um, enjoy the experience of, of filming because, you know, we were really fortunate that CNN was supportive of us doing the show that we were really passionate about doing. And, you know, it couldn't have, I think it couldn't have come out better. I think the production team did such a great job. But the experience of, you know, having those genuine experiences in those places 
um, it's odd watching on television, you know, <laughs> you know, frankly, because I, you know, when I'm there, I'm very much in the place. You know, it's almost like the cameras are are, are not there because I'm, I'm really that's taking a lot of pleasure. The goal. I mean, that's the goal is to, ha is yeah. to have the cameras be invisible. And the people, you want to respect the people in their, in their, in their time and honor that um, because we are, um, it's a very vulnerable position for them is, you know, they're bearing whatever thing they're passionate about to the world. And I really want to always want to honor that and be in the place with them and not, you know, be try, you know, trying to have an agenda or anything. We just let the conversation go where it will as we normally would. But it is, I'd say the oddest part is actually seeing it on TV because it's almost like it's in an odd way you're like wow someone was recording that <laughs> you, know, so, you, know, like, you know like there was a camera there you know uh but you know I, what i'd say is it's, it's been really great the feedback's really fantastic people enjoy it um and uh i couldn't ask for for any more it's so great i mean look i think we know that there's a tried and true success a formula for success of escapism you know people wanting wanderlust and wanting yeah. to you know, see, eat other foods and see other places and drink delicious things. I mean, that's just, it's just a winner. And so I really have, in, I have enjoyed watching, watching you. What do you have coming up this weekend? So we are, um, we just aired DC and Ghana is next. So um, yeah, Ghana, Ghana was a wild experience. I mean, it was, you talk, I mean, it's, it's, you know, there, there are a number of places where human nature is to go and try to find commonality you want to make yourself comfortable you go into a place you go what's similar and there's some a lot of places in the world you can go and you can say okay well i can see where this is you know i'll, I'll fit in here or here you know ghana you go in and it's like the world turned upside down it is nothing it, nothing operates or sounds like or smells like or functions like we do in america and you, you just you sort of landed it was like eyes wide open the whole time and you, 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 to respect the people in the place, you got to get on their timeline, on their pace. Yeah. You know, the train's going like you're, you're, you know, you can't go and try to own that situation or that, you know, no, you got to get on the train with them. That's the only way to really experience it. And that's what we try to do. And man, it was a ride. Um, and, and I think we did, the, the, the guys did a really great job of capturing that. But I mean, that was a show. If we went through it, we took, it was a lot of audible. Some of those scenes were last minute, like, oh no, we can do that. Because when you get on the ground, you feel the energy and you got to go with it sometimes. Like so there were whole scenes that were not in the, the, the plan. And we we're like, no, we got to go do that. So yeah. it was like, like last minute meeting tonight, tomorrow morning, we got to figure this out, do this, meet with this guy because we got to interview this guy. And like, like there was an artist, uh, Serge Atuque uh, Clotis, he's uh, a really incredible artist. And um, I uh, collect art from, from Ghanaian artists. It's probably, I, I think the most exciting art scene in the world is in Ghana right now. Is that um, right? Scene. Yeah, I mean, you know, Serge is doing a, uh, Amoko Bofo. Uh, I mean, there's so many like insane artists. Why, and the art's selling for crazy prices. And I said, we're not, we're not capturing enough of this. And I was like, and I happened to know a, a back way into him through uh, like a, an agent. And we somehow last minute got in touch with him and got to like go interview him. Like it, there was like three scenes like that throughout the episode. So it was wild. And, you know, it, you'll see there was some really uh, emotion driven moments. <laughs> with you know the back history of the slave trade there and, and so forth but also a celebration of this incredible connection of, of african-american culture to Ghanaian culture through through music and some of the the, the culinary ingredients um, and then looking at you know how their country has developed over the last like 10 15 years and you, you know i i don't think of any place i've visited in the world i've met kinder people um, I mean, it's, it's one of the safest countries. I mean, you just walk down the street and there's no violent crime. It's just, they're not, they're, they're a very peaceful people. They call them the Canadians of West Africa. Is what their <laughs> reputation is. You just sort of just walk down the street and there's like, you know, there's like, you know, I was walking down the street with a Rolex on and, and it was never a thought in my mind, like, oh, I'm going to get robbed or no, never, it never crossed their mind. And the people were so hospitable. They have such a rich culture. They just want to share it with you. Wow. And, yeah, I mean, I, I came back, you know, and we ate so much great food, but I came back just like, I, like breathless. Like it was such an experience. I felt like I was holding my breath the whole time, like on a ride. I got back home and I was like, what was that? Like, that was crazy. And it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was a whirlwind. Um, oh my gosh. I can't wait to see it. That's so exciting. It sounds really yeah. wonderful. Um, that's really, really cool. So we'll all watch it this weekend. And when are you coming back to New York? 
not soon enough. You know, I, I love New York. I, I lived there for, for, for only a couple of years, but I do this thing where I, I, I like to go in for three days at a time and then come home. And I go in for three days at a time. And I come How do you home. do those three days? I, you know, I, I eat and I drink and I, you know, I, I go see some art. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I love great art. So I always go and I hop to a museum, some art, I see some friends, we end up doing a dinner. Uh, you know, what are your favorite restaurants in New York to go to? You know, what? I'm, 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 I'm a bit old school. I, I, I go back to a lot of the same places. Like I, I'm, I'm not the kind where it's like, oh, this new place go open. I got to go check that out. Like, I want everyone else to go check it out and give also like the restaurant the opportunity to get up on their feet and go because there's enough people who want to do that they want to rush these places I give them a year you know and then I'll go and check them out I, I I tend to return back to the places that I crave you know I love eating so I go and sometimes I'm on the plane and I crave some food so I love peasant I love peasant peasant, peasant is so delicious I mean I'm talking about serious cooking huh I mean this is no fluff just oh great God. food so great. I sat next to, I mean, I love peasant. I like the vibe. I love the food. The food is so good. And I sat next to, this was years ago, Nicole Kidman and this cute guy that she was with named, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to, I'm going to blow my own joke. What's, what's her husband's name? Oh, Keith Urban. Like before she was ever, anybody knew she was with Keith Urban. We were like, I was like, oh, who's that cute guy she's with? And it was Keith Urban. We sat like right next to her. It just is a cool place to go. I mean, that's funny. I would, I'd be surprised to see them there, but it, it's because it doesn't seem like, I guess I could see that in there. It's a cool room. Um, but they got a great Italian wine list. I, I like um, I like ingredient-driven food, simple cooking. It's actually very hard to make food, you know, taste great with very simple execution. You know, the more you do the food, you can sort of cover up a lot of things. You know, you fluff this, do this, and, you know, no, but when you've got like great high quality octopus and just some tomatoes and some olive oil, you know, some garlic and, you know, like it's not, you know, you, got, you don't got a lot to, a lot of margin for error, you know? So I love that. And, and, and they've got all those dishes that they're, they're pasta Vangoli is exceptional. Um, I, you know, I love going to Balthazar. Yeah. I, I the last time I was in New York, you know, it's just. Sure, they have a good dirty martini for you. It, well, they, what they do is they do classic food consistently great. And I go in and I, I call, and this is, the, this is the pro move. I call and I say, look, I want to sit down. I want this bottle of champagne, but I want it so ice cold that it might be frozen. And I want the biggest grand plateau, <laughs> the seafood tower in fries. Because they got that incredible aioli. Yes. So go, I want the grand plateau, this bottle of, of, of champagne or magnum, depending on your party size, ice cold. Okay, in white wine glasses, no champagne, please, in white wine glass, and 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 freeze. And we start there before we even look at the menu, and oh and that's the way you start the experience. But everything is good. They the butter is good, the bread's good. Judge a place by their bread and butter, uh, and the classics. Even the desserts are exceptional. I mean, the, uh, the chocolate pot de creme, the profiteroles. I mean, it, and that's the thing. It's like man, he they they kill that restaurant. So for me, it's like New York. I've got my mainstays. That just you know, I'll I'll. Uh, I'll go to, and, and occasionally I have buddies that they know how picky I am. Um, I don't want to waste a meal. I only got so many meals left in my life. <laughs> I don't want every meal to be delicious. Life is too short for a bad meal. I totally hear you. Oh. Um, well, I'm going to force you next time you're in New York to bring me. Oh, so, yeah. Um, and so that sounds great. You've given us such great uh, tips, little helpful hints of restaurants and wine and everything. I love the drink. I'm going to bring this other one to my husband in a minute. I was going to say, who's that second cocktail for? I saw, I saw you for the second one. <laughs> <laughs> I have a second one and I, I'm not going to kill it. Just, you know, out of uh, courtesy for my COVID. Um, but anyway, Carlton, this has been so great. Thanks. I Thank love you talking. So it's really uh, exciting to hear what you like and can't wait to watch the Ghana thing this weekend. You're going to visit. Um, and so just let me know when you're back in New York. We'll dine. We'll dine. Love that. Love right. that. Thanks so Thank much for your time. You.